Hey guys. Hey. I do want to say I do have a free blog with recipes and I'm actually one blogger that doesn't do advertising. Um, I could get, I was offered paid thousands of dollars a month to have advertising, but I saw chips advertised that first day. They were keto chips. And so I took the ads down. Um, but that's how a lot of bloggers do get paid, and I don't. I mean, even Bon Appetit, everybody has advertisements, so I just want you to know that's a safe place because I don't want people to be like, oh, this says keto, like Nisha says, and it's not something I would ever recommend. So those are a lot of free recipes. Um, there was a time when um, my husband lost his job. We lost our house and cars. We had nothing, so I understand that not everybody wants to buy a cookbook, and so I try to put those out there. Otherwise, you could ask your library. My husband's always like, you could, you're the worst marketer ever. But I understand, like, that's how we survive. That was our date night. It was libraries. So if you don't, and if you're worried about um, a cookbook and you just want to try it out, a uh, library is a great place to start. Um, but I took a few notes. I want you to start out. So we're talking about quick and easy ways to do keto. Raise your hand. If you or someone you know has a gym bag ready to go to the gym after work, but yet they don't have time to cook anything. I used to do that. I used to think, oh, I need to go to the gym. Best thing I did was cut my gym membership. I did not like being underneath the fluorescent lights. I didn't like the music. I just didn't like it. You know what I did? I went to Target and I bought some hand weights and I walked with my kids and we walk and talk and I lift weights in the woods. Like, I don't like to go to the gym. It was way too much time to drive there and I don't even live that far. But by the time I got through all the stoplights, my kids didn't really want to do the kid stuff thing. And it was just way more, and, and it feels like not work. I'm like outside in the woods lifting weights, it's great. So I just want, we all have priorities. like. I rarely, like, I don't like to do my hair, it's usually up in a bun, but I make sure to make time to make good food, right? Um, and uh, what's interesting is we have Chipotle about five minutes from our house, and we got home uh, from the beach one day, and everybody was hungry. I said, Craig, okay, you know how everybody says it costs too much to uh, eat keto, and it's too much time to cook, right? I said, you jump in the car with Kai, and you drive to Chipotle, and I'm gonna stay here with Micah, and we're gonna make Chipotle at home, okay? And I said, bring the receipt. So Mike and I started cooking, and we use all grass-fed meat, and we kept a sheet of the price. Not only were Mike and I done eating, we also cleaned up, and we had leftovers for the next day. Craig spent about twice as much money, it took him twice as much time, and this is all documented on the blog. You can see it's kind of funny. Um, and it's just, it didn't take much time to make it at home. It didn't cost more money. But it did take some effort. I had to stand there and cook. But you know what? I don't have to go to the gym. People <laughs> underestimate that, you know, active, just daily life, walking around the grocery store, getting groceries, and, you know, throwing some music on and cooking. That is way more enjoyable than running on a treadmill. I went to the gym and looked today just what it looked like. And I was like, oh man, that looks like not very much fun. <laughs> you know, and so just, you know, it does, right? And I don't do it, I, I like to lift weights and stuff. I do it because it's my natural antidepressant. It just makes me happy. I like to feel strong. Um, but I just wanted you to realize there, there's priorities in life and it might take some time and planning ahead and things like that. Um, another quick and easy tip is um, I don't use many nut flowers. I might have it once a year on a birthday. Okay, like you guys were saying, like the nut flowers and things, people really overestimate. You wouldn't have a cupcake every day, right? So why is a keto cupcake okay? You know, even like those minute muffins and things like that. Um, but there is something, um, if you really crave chocolate, it's usually a magnesium deficiency. If you really crave salty foods, it's usually a zinc deficiency. Don't just jump in and start zinc because you'll get nauseous. But you lose a lot of zinc as you sweat and the thyroid is a zinc hog. But, you know, craving certain things, 
you can kind of you know change the what foods once you get your minerals in and things like that but if you really crave chocolate I have a flourless chocolate torte it's five ingredients um, I'm a part of the clean plate club and so a long time ago I learned so I'm gonna make the batter for the whole thing but I'm gonna put it in ramekins okay and then I freeze most of the ramekins and just bake one at a time because nothing's better than like a fresh, melty goodness. Again, you don't want to do this every day, but if you're dying, you know, that's a good option, you know? Um, but uh, I also was gonna say for quick and easy meals, um, I had all these ideas for what recipes I wanted to make and, you know, Jimmy introduced me to this wonderful publisher of Victory Belt and they said, no, you need to do a quick and easy book. I was like, really? You know who likes it? Halle Berry. Oh, <laughs> I was like, thank you, Irish, for telling me to do a quick and easy book. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, she's a type one diabetic. Um, she actually personally wrote me a message and it was really cool and Craig's like, you know that it's actually her because she's dyslexic and I have a son that is, so I understand you know, the issues of that, but it was really cool cause because you know, she had her mistakes just like Kai would have his spelling mistakes and stuff. Um, but Craig's like, wow, you really know that's her writing you. It's not like a marketing manager or something like that. So it was really cool. We went back and forth. I feel very blessed. Um, but that book is really quick and easy. Like things are five ingredients. Um, some are a little bit more than that, but it's once I started having kids, I like to be in the kitchen. I don't judge people for not liking that because I don't like to clean. You know, some people like to clean, they don't like to cook. So I get, like, we all have things we like to do. Um, but once I had kids, um, Kai would cry if I ever put him down. So I would hold him in a baby carrier, nonstop. This kid didn't even know how to walk till he was like three and a half. You think I'm kidding, and he didn't. But I just wanted to suck that time up. And then Micah was jealous, so I always had to hold his hand. Guess what that means? I have one hand to stir. We got home from Ethiopia the day before Thanksgiving, and I thought, oh, I'm super mom. I'm a kid. I can do Thanksgiving dinner, right? We have to have these special holidays. So here I am. There's pictures of me in my jammies holding Kai, because he, seriously, I had to do laundry, otherwise he'd scream if I put him down. If Craig looked at him like he was going to hold him, yeah. Um, now they're independent, but anyway, this is me, like doing everything. And so that book is really like a labor of love because I really had to learn how to make things quick and easy because of the children, you know, because now I had two more mouths to feed and I had way less time. So um, that book has a lot of different options in there. Um, also, if you have a slow cooker, I mentioned this yesterday. I was thinking about this. I was like, ah, oh, everything I said yesterday, I should have been talking about today. Um, but slow cooker, yes, I have three of them. Um, if you don't like to cook, slow cooker is your best friend. I still like my slow cooker. Everybody else likes their Instant Pot. Uh -huh. um, and so, yes, there's an Instant Pot cookbook. Um, I handed in that man's new script about nine years ago. Uh, or nine months ago, I'm sorry. Feels uh, nine years ago. Yeah, right. It does. It feels like a long time ago. But this book is really special to me, too, because it's not only the Instant Pot directions, it's the slow cooker directions. And you think it wouldn't be that different, but it really is. Like, the ingredients are different. Sometimes you need, um, like, a saute mode, but then in the slow cooker, you can emit the um, coconut oil or whatever you're cooking in, the lard. Um, and the layering is different because in an instant pot it would burn part of the food where the slow cooker didn't so it's all different but what I like to say is if you forgot to plan the instant pot is your best friend so if you're not really a planner and you're kind of like a you know just a fly by the seat of your pants type of cook um, that's where the instant pot comes into play and you know there's a lot of things on Pinterest or Instagram there's a lot of um, instant pot recipes there um, but if you plan ahead, that's your slow cooker game. Cause you could throw a frozen chicken, a whole one, in an instant pot, and it will cook, and it's pretty good. And you could do bone broth in the instant pot. I don't know. I get at this question all the time. What's the mineral content? Because I do mine in the slow cooker. I was telling you about Kai how he loves bone broth. Um, 
I do mine in the slow cooker for about two days. It smells your house up. So if you're not used to that smell, it's a little bit different. That was something I had to get used to. Instant Pot, you can do it within a few hours. It tastes fresher, but I don't know the mineral content because you want to extract the minerals from the bones. Um, I get that question all the time. I don't know. So I still slow cook it. That's just me. Um, but there's other products out there. There's now real bone broth that you can get. I like Kettle and Fire. Not only are they a nice small company, um, it's also grass-fed, real quality bone broth if you don't have time to make it. Um, that's what I usually use in the summertime because I don't like to heat up my house and that type of stuff. So that's an easy, you know, soup. I don't just drink bone broth. I use it in soups, stews, um, salad dressings. I'll use that um, for a shortcut or sauces, things like that. Yes. 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 She asked if there's a uh, book with non, uh, like baking or oven type things. That's where I, I guess the Instant Pot and slow cooker comes into play because people think of slow cooking or Instant Pot cooking as a winter thing. I see it as a summer thing because I'm always on the go in the summer and so before we leave the house, I'll turn that slow cooker on. It doesn't heat my house up and um, you know, you're good to go. Or the Instant Pot doesn't heat your house up. and. Uh, I'm not a gadget girl, I don't like gadgets, but I do like my toaster oven. Um, I got a small toaster oven from Craig as a gift and I was like, I, thank you, I, I'm not going to use this. You know what, I use it every day because it heats up in minutes and it has an air fryer and makes really good chicken wings that way and that's Kai's favorite food. But also, um, it doesn't heat the house up where my other, my oven does. You know, and so that's where I do like that. Um, but I would say I would get the slow cooker out in the summertime because it doesn't heat the house up and it's really good, you know. Um, ribs are really awesome in the slow cooker. I think they're, they fall apart <coughs> wonderfully. I mean, I, I smoke ribs a lot, um, but in a, in a pinch, I'll do that. Oh, my other tip for quick and easy. So I don't like to go, I don't like to shop. Um, I really don't. Everything is mailed to my house. Um, all my groceries are mailed to my house. The grass-fed beef I get is about the same price it is at Trader Joe's, and it's mailed to me for that same price. And also seafood um, is mailed to me, so then I just have to be, you know, planning ahead where the night before I'll take out, you know, a, the steak, so the pork chop, or whatever you want to eat, the fish, and then it's in the fridge, and then you know what? I mean, a piece of catfish is really easy to fry in five minutes. You know, blackened catfish is really good, and then you have your tartar sauce. While that's frying, you just kind of mix everything together. Do you have another question? Yeah, I was going to say, you get Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> well, um, I get about 11 dozen eggs from my neighbor. Um, she stopped doing that lately, so that's something that we do have to go to the store for. So I just... Uh, I'll mail you some eggs. I know, right? You have to be living next to Jimmy. But yeah, we did have a neighbor that did that. Um, but again, it was kind of like we would go see the chickens and make an event out of it. We don't really eat a lot of produce, so I don't, um, I don't know. I don't worry about that too much, but yeah, I mean, you might have to go once in a while to get that type of stuff, but um, in a pinch, it's just nice to have those options. We have three chest freezers. Yes, I'm a cookbook author, but we also, I have a little doggy, and um, she had, my first dog had a lot of food allergies, so, and I didn't have any money, the cheapest thing to do was to go to the butcher and get ground up beef heart because nobody likes it. Nobody wants it. I get it for the cheap. I'm going to tell everybody this and now it's going to get expensive. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. But they would even grind it up for me because there were these nice butchers that knew us and they still do it. Um, 
but that's what she eats, ground up beef hearts. Everybody's like, you need to write a doggy cookbook. And I was like, it's ground up beef hearts. <laughs> and they, she chews on bones for some minerals, but um, that's what she eats. Um, you know, dogs are, you know, they should be carnivores. They shouldn't be eating, you know, rice and stuff that's in the dog food. And that was just making, you know, my first dog really, really sick. Um, but that, between that and bow hunting and fishing, um, yeah, we have three chest freezers. And, you know, it's a, an initial investment, but in the end, it ends up costing us a lot of money. Um, I get a lot of testimonies on how much money people are saving eating keto. And if you think about, like, skim milk and cereal and all of those snacks and chips, uh, a lot of people are saving $2,000 a year even eating the organic stuff. I had a vegan client who was, um, she, she was single, um, and she, not only did she save a lot of money every year, she saved so much time because she had to go to the store all the time because she was always grazing, because um, she was always hungry eating vegan. Um, and so now she eats once a day, uh, lots of good, she goes right to the farmer and gets all of her beef and things like that, and she, you know, never has felt better, um, but yeah, that's how that goes. And then I kept a couple notes here. Anybody have any questions? Yes, in the back. Packing lunches for kids. Yeah, and sometimes we. Hi, buddy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes, we have. Um, I worked at Camp St. Croix um, before I did this, and um, that's where my kids go for like this homeschool day. And what I love to do, and they really enjoy it, is they have little kid thermoses. And like I told you, Micah likes my protein noodle lasagna or my chili or one of my soups. You put that in there, it will be warm for lunchtime. And then you could do different things. Um, we like Vermont beef sticks. Everybody says, so Maria, what's, I need a protein bar for like traveling. I was like, it's called a beef stick. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's, I mean, Quest bars was my mistake. You talk about the gummy bears. Quest bars were my mistake. I mean, they taste like candy. And I think that they hate me because I always say, you know, it tastes like a candy bar because it kind of is. You know, it has as much carbohydrates as a Kit Kat bar. But, what's that? Kind of bars? Kind bars, too. I, I haven't tried those, and I, I won't anymore, or, you know. Full of sugar. Full of sugar. Wow. Oh. Right, but you know, they say that they, you can subtract the fiber, and that's the type of stuff that you see online that you have to go la 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 la, you know? Um, it's just not helping anybody, and even the fiber carbs, they matter. They really, really do. Um, will I, you know, like, um, I, I know like keto cookies or newy cookies are really nice guys. Will they let my kids have them? Yes. Me? Like Nisha said, we're all different. That's not good for mommy. But I will let them have them, and they're here packed with us. I'm pretty honest, like keto cookies. If you want to try some, I have some with us for the kids, right? Um, and you can have some, buddy. Yes. Um, they, you know, they are good, but... <laughs> yeah. And I also have those beef sticks if he wants to try them, too. Um, and, uh, you know... Different things like you, you make it work. Like, yes, we're traveling. Um, my little guy, Micah, likes pepperoni. So you know what? Nitrates or not, he's getting some pepperoni. Eat your because pepperoni. Eat your pepperoni. Um, people are so like, so what? You made pizza. What kind of what kind of pepperoni you use, right? I was like, I don't know. Like, just. just yeah, I mean, but you know, like the Vermont beef sticks say that, that it's uncured or something. I don't know. I don't know really what that means. Um, but, uh, you know, it's pepperoni and that type of stuff packs easy in a lunch bag. And um, I don't know. I think Dr. Uh, Westman talks about putting them in the microwave <laughs> to make them into chips. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like it's all your journey. Like there's no judging. In the beginning, if you looked at my diet a long time ago, it's pretty bad. You know, it was keto, but it was kind of that lazy keto. 
And as the years went on, like I realized what made me feel good and what made me feel not so good. And now we're pretty much, you know, carnivores and you know all organic. But hey, even ten years ago, we didn't have like any money, so it wasn't organic. Um, there was a pretty big dispute on the last cruise about, you know, you have to eat organic. Well, you know what? Nobody is here. You're on a cruise ship. That's right. yeah. There's no judging, right? Like, you do what you can. Um, yes? I was so disappointed. Everybody in New Orleans uses Tony Satcher. Everybody. When I turned it around and looked at the ingredients, my heart sank. What was it? I missed that. It's a Tony seasoning. Satcher is a seasoning. Oh, and seasoning. I looked at the ingredients, and there's dextrose in it. Yeah. Look at Morton salt. Look at Morton salt. Iodized salt, the second ingredient is dextrose. And anything with the OSE means sugar. Um, and so, you know, those are just little things that, you know, like, but you know what? 10 years ago, probably had that in my pantry. You know, but it's just like you said, you, you keep learning and keep learning. And, you know, being new to keto, you'll keep learning and, you know, keep track of that. Yes, question. Oh. The clean, oh, what is the clean plate? Who knows what the clean plate club is? So, um, we didn't have a lot of money when I was a kid, and Craig is the youngest of six uh, kids. And the clean plate club is what's on your plate, you need to finish every bite. You know, and you right, you can't leave the table. Yeah, they're starving children in Africa. Right, they're, they're starving yeah. children in Africa. Yes. I tell them to put it in a box and send it to <laughs> but that was something ingrained in us. Yes. You know, like, um, I remember hearing stories about us poaching deer to, you know, have food, um, you know, during off season. So understanding that, you know, food is precious to many people on earth, you finish your plate. And that's, um, you know, otherwise it goes to waste. But still, as an adult, you know, you go to the buffet and you fill your plate up and you're just like, oh, dude, like, my eyes are way bigger than my stomach, right? Um, and it's, sometimes it's hard to stop. Sometimes we want to clean that plate, right? Um, last week, I was speaking um, at a hospital in New York with Dr. Kiltz, and I love what he says, variety is not the spice of life, it's a concoction for disaster. <laughs> because your brain gets bored Right? So you move on to the next food, and you move on to the next food, and you move on to the next food. If you just had a steak, like Dr. Kiltz eats a big old ribeye every day. That's what he eats. That and my ice cream. Um, but what he says is, after a while, I'm sick of that steak. It gets boring. You know, but if I had like a couple different sides, I'd just keep on moving and trying different things. Um, and eventually being like, whoa, I'm way too stuffed. That's the, the the disaster of what a buffet is. Yeah. Yes, Robin. Um, I just had, um, I know for you guys, I think it'll help, but I found a website um, called eatwild.com, and it matches you with local farms or close. Like the one I use, um, I believe it delivers to Slide Now. So I don't know if that's too far from New Orleans, but I, right. Um, so I just go like once every two weeks, and the locals, so if you're not lucky enough to get a to do the procedure, <laughs> Do they have eggs on there? They do. Oh. I do. And they're some of them are blue, some of them are white. Cute. They're all washed and great. Um, but I get all the dry grass that I eat there and um, pasture oh. for eggs. Um, and they bring it within 20 minutes to my house. And I think they go slide out. <coughs> but it's a national thing. So it's Eatwild.com. <coughs> oh, yeah. It's been out there many years. Yeah. And at least you can check it out. I don't right. know if all the farms are good. But you support your local they absolutely, absolutely. I get some, um, you know, like you were talking about social media. It, like I don't like social media because people are they pick on me. They're too mean to me, and I don't even want to start crying because that's why I don't do a lot of social media. Like I do as much as I can. Um, but people are mean to me about bow hunting. They're mean to me about saying I get butcher box. I go to the local farmer, and I get a whole cow, but it doesn't sustain us. Like, we're on a wait list. We're 
re-eat that whole cow within a few months, and then we have to like, you know, get, uh, what do you call it? Supplemental. Supplemental beef, right? Um, so, you know, it's not, I am supporting a local farmer, but you know, yeah. And I got butcher bags for a long time. Yeah. Because I didn't know there was anyone around me. They don't do eggs. And yeah. Do they do fish now? They do salmon. They do some salmon too, but yeah, but, but you know. Yes, question. Um, I have a girlfriend that, that no matter what we talk about, she wants to always one up on me. <laughs> we all have uh, Oh my gosh, I think I have a child that does that. Recently, we had a discussion about grass fed, and I said, Oh, I'm eating grass fed. And I thought she was going to say, Oh, that's great. Yeah. She says, Wow, well, are you eating grass finished? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know what grass fed was. Oh, that's was. so funny. So I was like, yeah. Um, I went home and I Googled it. Yep. And of course, now I know what grass finish right. is. So it's, all right, so what's your take on that? No judging. Right. Get to what you can. Yeah. Right? No judging. I mean, Some people do not like the taste of grass finished. It's going to be a wild game taste. Yeah. Can you and explain it? What people that so, know? yeah. Good point, Jimmy. Um, wild, or, you know, grass finished. So grass fed beef can be finished with corn. Um, they bring the animals in and sometimes they have to supplement because they might live in an area where it's 20 below zero, right? And they don't have the grass to graze on and so they supplement um, with you know some corn. And so that's how they finish them and then it gets more of a marbling flavor. Grass fed's gonna be leaner. It's going to have, you know, not as a marbly steak, that type of stuff. So some people don't like it. Um, I will say, being a bow hunter, I was sitting in my deer stand, and I'm looking down, it's like, wow, that's soybean. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a grass-fed animal anymore. They're eating corn and soy. And so yeah. I was like, wow, this this isn't a grass-fed animal, you know, but um, yeah, we moved since then, and so now they're eating acorns, but I'm sure they wander a couple, you know, 10 miles down the street and get some, you know, it's just different. And it was really eye-opening to think like, but you know what, I, I'm i gonna eat it. Um, and so it's just, our food supply is different. It's really different. And so, you know, ask her, did you go to the farmer and watch him butcher it? <laughs> you know? Yes. Two things. One, an animal uh, like a deer tastes like the area it's in. Yes. It in. And also, the guy that tells you you should hunt, and I think, you know, you realize if I didn't hunt, you'd be overrun by deer. <laughs> I know, it's the called a limiting it factor. It's called a limiting factor. If you know somebody that's very judgmental about hunting, you need limiting factors, otherwise they're going to die of starvation, or they're going to be hit by your car and ruin it. Yeah. Like, whatever it is. I mean, they're like rabbits. If you watch my Instagram, I probably do more deer photos than I do food photos, just because they're like little rabbits, you know, like all over the place. Um, when I was a kid, there was no such thing as a deer in Ohio. No. There was never a deer. Now they're all Now they're over. everywhere. Yeah. They're, they are. They're that and over. turkeys. They're actually running over. That is, yeah. Yeah. But we need hunters. Did you have one more question? I, I, I have to see you guys are talking about that. The senator who just won up north who said nobody should ever hunt. They should go to the grocery store and buy their meat like she does. And she won. I just had to throw that out there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Where? I don't want to move there. Uh -uh. New York. It was kind of, I don't know what she was running for, but she won. Wow. I just have, I oh, like, oh, we should never fish either. Yeah. <laughs> but like, one thing I want to leave you with is that no matter where you are in your journey, um, like I like that Nisha was saying, let's support each other, find somebody on social media, but try not to judge people. <laughs> Even if you saw someone post the gummy bears, don't be a dink and be mean. Like that's what like shuts me down. Like. Yep. Everybody's in a different journey, you know, and just be kind. Kindness goes a long way in, uh, you know, a lot of ways. That's all I want to say. Okay. Maria, thank you. Yeah, I don't know anything about this judgment thing online. Yeah. <laughs> it never happens, so. so uh,